Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to do a little bit of work on this beautiful Dell Dimension 2400 that I found at a thrift store. I got a great deal on this whole package here. I got the computer, which is this beautiful Dell Dimension 2400 Pentium 4, and uh, this monitor it came with the uh, keyboard and mouse. You can see it looks like it's dirty, it's probably been sitting on the shelf at the thrift store for a while, and also who knows, it's previous life, but this whole package here I found for 10 bucks and you know I've been looking for like an XP era computer for a little while so I just decided why not and also this comes from uh, an era uh, you know where I was living on budget PCs and this would have been a relatively decent PC for the time not a great PC it still would have been kind of an average PC but at the time I was living off of bare bones computers and throwing Linux on them so um, I thought this might be a fun one to just you know, upgrade and maybe do a little bit of uh, early era Windows XP gaming on it. So here is my video on working on this guy. So this little lever, it's really easy to take this apart. Push this little lever down in the side panel, just slides off just like that. Really, really simple. And here's the stamped on date. I found it immediately. It looks like it was October 6, 2003. I have to look at a calendar and see where I was on that date. And the inside of this thing is just a god awful mess. Who knows? where this thing came from looks like it may have been sitting on the floor maybe in a college dorm room or something and it just sucked in a bunch of stuff from the carpet i don't know but it smelled like a combination of old fried chicken and death i don't know it, it was terrible in the, in this thing it obviously needed a lot of cleaning work i didn't do a full tear down but uh, you'll see and you know obviously like the power supply sucked in a lot of crap and the cables are just a mess everything is just covered in crap so we're going to see if we can clean this thing up a little bit. I'll just get started here by uh, unplugging. We got an IDE cable here that plugs in the main hard drive, pulling that out. And then taking the face panel off. It's pretty easy. There's two little levers on the left side and then these two little hooks on the right side. And it slides off pretty simple. But look at that. Oh my God. That was disgusting. No matter how it looks on the camera, it, it's just, yeah, it, that was gross. And uh, half of it fell off before this shot was even done. So I grabbed the vacuum and sucked it off and wow. Not only did that sound weird coming out of my mouth, but that does look a lot better after getting all that stuff off of there. Now we'll just grab a paper towel with some 70% alcohol, which I like to use alcohol because it gets rid of the gunk and the muck and 70% isn't too strong where it's gonna destroy too much unless, you know, there's certain stuff like stickers you wanna be careful about, of course, but look at this. I mean, ugh, yeah. And I'm also gonna do the same thing on the face here, rubbing it down, just making sure that I get the crap off and then using this toothbrush to get into the little crevices that I just can't get into. And I'm just gonna play Russian roulette with the vacuum. You always wanna be careful when you use a vacuum inside of a case like this, because you never know what you're gonna suck up. And here I'm gonna take out the modem that was in there. As you can see, a little 56K modem, pretty cool. But uh, it needs a little bit of a bath, so I'm going to clean it up and make it look, look all nice and good. I mean, even old modems deserve a little bit of, you know, beauty once in a while. And try to get as much of this uh, up with um, some alcohol. The next thing I'm going to do is take out this little hard drive bay by taking this screw out here. And there's also a screw on the bottom. So once you take this screw out, that uh, little chassis there is freed, so then once I pull the machine back up, I just lift up and then out, and this thing comes free. And here's a 40 gigabyte max or hard drive that this machine came with. And with the vacuum, I will suck out a little bit more of the dust that was back there and try to rub some of it off with the paper towel and alcohol. And now we'll just unplug a little bit more of the cables. Here's the power cable to the CD-ROM drive and then the IDE cable. Look at that underneath it, ugh, gross. Pull that out and uh, put this aside for right now. And again, playing Russian roulette with the vacuum. Uh, you know, again, you wanna be careful. I find this to be a pretty good shortcut if you know what you're doing, but a lot of people say if you're gonna do something like this, it's better to blow than suck. That way if something flies out, you can always go grab it and put it back. And of course you can do it with the vacuum too. You go inside the vacuum and grab whatever got sucked in and put it back. But uh, you know, I always inspect first and if it looks like everything's pretty solid, I'll grab the vacuum. I'll just pull this little exhaust fan here and uh, give this a cleaning because obviously this thing looks pretty dirty. So I'll take the vacuum and suck as much of the dirt and grime and nastiness off of here and then off the back as well. 
And then the CPU fan could use a little bit of attention and as well as these back components. Do a little bit of scrubbing on the fan because this stuff is caked on. Ugh. I have no idea how long this thing could have just been sitting around doing absolutely nothing. And here I am obviously sucking on the board a little bit, putting the exhaust fan back in and then plugging it back on the board and putting it back where it was. That's pretty much all I really feel like doing, but look at that. I mean, it's it's, it's just a huge improvement. So I just kind of ran over the cables with the vacuum to suck the uh, the crap off, and then on the, uh, the, the uh, power supply and the peripherals here. So it's a huge improvement, absolutely huge. And let's see, let's pull the floppy disk cable out, and I'm just gonna rub it down with some alcohol here to just, you know, clean it up, make it look nice. Put it back where I found it, and I'm doing the same thing with the IDE cable for the CD-ROM drive, rubbing it down with alcohol, and then I'm putting it back where it was, and just sort of putting the machine back together. And I don't know why I did this, but I put the modem back in. I guess maybe just to put it in one place. Maybe I quit for the day. And I'll clean the case here with some alcohol and paper towel. And these little bottom rubber things, I mean, they've definitely, they're, they're, they're dead. So I'm just gonna rip them off, and then these little things here, you know, these are the kind of things that you would use on the bottom of furniture so you can move it around on like hardwood. So I'm just going to replace those with these little guys. They work really good in these sorts of circumstances as I uh, continue to clean the externals of the workstation and blow some air into the fan. Now, I'm not going to really show all the work I did on the monitor. The monitor was pretty gross, but there was just one highlight, which is this here. There was some weird, I don't know, like some Velcro thing. I don't know, got it off with some alcohol. No big deal. But the monitor was in pretty good shape. I was pretty happy with it. Now it's time to upgrade the RAM. So it came with 512 megabytes of RAM, and here I got two gigs of RAM, which is the most that this board will support. So I'll take the original RAM chip out. And then here are the RAM chips that I got on eBay, which were actually very affordable. So there's the one gig stick and the two gig stick. Just in case you don't know how to install RAM, you do now. I also got my hands on this uh, GeForce 6200 512 megabyte uh, PCI graphics accelerator. Now I'm stuck with PCI because the uh, Dimension 2400 did not support AGP. You can see solder points on the board where an AGP card would go for perhaps a, a higher model of the Dell Dimension computers because they probably just used the same printed boards and then just added some additional components. but. Like I said, this one didn't have that, so I'm stuck with PCI, so I'll stick that card in there. And I'll just go ahead and put this little drive bay back in there with no hard drive in it, because I'm going to stick a solid state drive in here. And uh, I did notice that the floppy disk drive was broken. I'm not going to go through my adventure with that, but I did end up taking it apart. There were lots of broken pieces in there. I think what happened maybe was at some point somebody got a disk stuck, they tried to get it out with a knife or something, and this thing was completely torn to shreds, but lucky for me, I found a new old stock on eBay, and it was actually really affordable. So I'll just go ahead and take this apart, and this actually just came, it came full, I mean it had everything. So all I had to do was slide it in, there was really no assembly required other than this one screw, and I got a brand new disk drive for this thing, and it worked like a champ, so I was pretty happy about that. It, it's gorgeous, amazing. And this right here is a SATA uh, controller card for PCI. So this will allow me to have SATA drives in this machine, which is what I'm going to be using for my solid state hard drive. So I'll pull out one of these open slots here and stick the uh, controller card in there. And this controller card is also kind of neat because I can also use it to a rate to do a rate configuration if I want. So here is the data cable that plugs into the controller card. And this is a power converter which converts from this uh, power style to the SATA power style and here's the hard drive that I'm going to use it's just like a reused hard drive from another, another old computer 256 gigabytes I figured that was more than enough for this project I'm just going to stick it on the outside of this here using these little sticky things here this is just velcro so I stick this side here pull this off stick this here and then I'll pull the uh, plastic covering off the other side and just stick it on that bay that way I can just easily take it off and on at my desire and just have velcro holding it onto the case I just figured that would be the easiest way to do this. All right, we'll plug the power in and we'll plug the data in. And at this point, we pretty much have a machine that's together. So if we power this on, let's see here. All right, so we know that the video card works because we're getting video. And I can see that the array controller, the SATA controller works because it sees the hard drive. 
And I gotta hit F1 to continue. I'll try to figure out what that's all about. There must be some configuration that I don't understand on that card. And okay, good look. Looks like we have some uh, Windows 10 configure or, or partition on there. Recovery partition, but we're gonna install Windows XP. So put the disk in the drive. And this is a legit Windows XP copy that I have laying around. So we'll stick it in there and we will boot from the disk. And here we go. So we gotta push uh, F6 here because we have to install a third party as uh, controller. I'll press S here and I put the drivers for that controller on this floppy disk. So I'll stick it in the floppy disk drive, select the operating system and I'll pull the disk out and I'll press enter to continue here. And Windows XP is just gonna go on its merry way. Sorry that I don't have my capture device over here. It, it would have been too much of a pain. And I'm uh, just gonna agree to install Windows XP. And here are the partitions that were on there. So there's that, that main partition and this is probably that recovery partition that I tried to boot from just a minute ago. And we'll just format this like it's a new, new hard drive. Doopy doopy doo, all right. Not too shabby. All right, Windows is gonna go on a merry way. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but it's asking me for the floppy disk again, so I'll stick it in there. And there we go, all right, so I'll just do all this stuff and make sure that my juice is in shot so that y'all know that we're having a good old time here. And there we go, now we're actually booting into Windows. Now, I didn't actually install that fast, but now I'll make sure that the video card actually works by installing a driver. I mean, I know that it works, but um, I wanna make sure that the drivers work. So here is, just me putting the machine back together now that I know that everything seems to be working fine. So put the faceplate back on, which is a very easy process, and the side panel back on. And again, that's also a very easy process. This has been a, a very easy, very fun, very relaxing weekend project. And fire this thing up, and let's see here. Let's see how long it takes to boot XP. So this is the real time. So that's pretty, that's not, I mean, that's pretty quick, especially for a computer from that era, for any of you guys that remember that time. And I'm gonna actually stick this old wireless USB stick in here so I can get it online. And I have an old version of Chrome and, and stick it on here, that one that's actually supported in XP. And hey, it works. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. So let's go to the uh, YouTube channel. Let's just see if we can play video. And let's see, all right. YouTube didn't even exist when this computer came out. At least I don't think it did. And it's playing just fine. Not bad at all. Yeah. Ooh, look at that. Playing like a champ. Yeah, and on top of that, we're downloading some updates. This is a really fun project, and I can't wait to maybe play some games and do some other cool stuff on this at some other time. So uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.